Scannell here with the Health and Happiness Hacks Wellness Show Part 2 with Tony because he's, I knew we were going to go along with this guy. He's got so much amazing information, especially when it comes to um, the keto diet. I know we haven't done a show on that topic yet, so I'm excited to spend this extra time talking about it. Okay. And so we'll launch right back into it. Okay. I think we ended by not using the D word. I okay. think that was what we ended Oops. With. Sorry. <laughs> Just can't get the stuff, seriously. Uh, 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 and, um, okay. So yeah, so essentially all these things are low-carb, high-fat. Yeah. Low-carb, high-fat, not high-protein. So the challenge with high-protein is you're not tapping into your fat, so your fat's just storing. So on this count, what happens if you're, if you're eating high-fat, and a good, a good challenge for this, if you, if you get a bag of what they call pork rinds, you know, like crunchy pork? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pork rinds? <laughs> okay. If you get a bag of those, I'll get three bags of pork rinds, three bags of potato chips, you'll eat the potato chips. Try and eat three bags of pork rinds. So fat is more satiating. So consequently, you're not hungry. You're running off your own body fat. And um, someone like me, um, I'll eat once a day. If someone's like very active, an athlete or bodybuilder, a lot of them are just like twice a day. However, we also use a hack, which is the keto drink, which means I can go out and have a glass of wine or go to a barbecue without saying, well, I'd love to eat the barbecue. I need to know the exact ingredients of the based on the chicken and where the chicken came from and who the farmer's name was and do you have a certificate? And well, if your beer has no carbs and I'll drink it, like, and you become a complete weirdo, yeah. as opposed to yeah, sure, whatever. And you know, if I, if I eat the wrong thing, I do the wrong. Thing. Not the wrong thing, but just let it go. I had pizza yesterday. I'm, like, I'm going straight to hell. I'm going straight to keep the hell today. Oh, I would, because it would have reset me. I would have to restart the whole ketogenic process again. So I just have, I have a drink and it's a hack and that's what we do. And they talk about the warrior diet too, which is the... Well, yeah, well, that's the same thing, yeah. I mean, the warrior diet essentially is from um, Ori uh, from the Israel Defense Force. But if you track that back, it's also the same kind of things the Spartans used to eat and uh, Roman, not so much centurions, but definitely gladiators. Heavy in fats, once a day. Uh, you know, the original Mediterranean diet Dietia is Greek. The one we have been sold was from, oh, we have all these like olive groves and things. No, it came from Crete up the mountain. There's no olive groves. It's like sheep and lamb. That's the, that's the original one. And that, I kind of stick to that kind of thing because it also, the ancient Greeks used to drink wine. So apparently that's allowed. It's a way. And um, so that's what it is. And then we, we you know, we set, we got this like business. It's going great and like, like phenomenally great. Tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of dollars in revenue, like fast, like insanely fast within a year. And I'm looking and like, you know, we're all doing well. Life's good. And I got to this point where you know, I live on the top of a hill and I can see the ocean and I go to the coffee shop and I play on my phone all day and it's like not a perfect life, but it's pretty close, you know, you're in San Diego, like, it did rain once last year, I believe, and uh, twice, twice yes. last year, and 300 times in the last five days. <laughs> no, right. Not really. And um, I'm looking at this, and it was before my birthday last year, the same month as May, May, do you want to give you the date just so you remember? Okay, I don't need gifts, but it, it's May. And um, I'm like, I feel in this void, there's got to be more, and I don't know what it is. And, you know, in my previous, like, 10, 20 years, 20 years ago, for sure, I'd have gone out and just bought a new car or a watch or a suit or something material to give me the next high and feel better for, like, a month or a week, whatever. And I, I became a minimalist years ago by losing everything, uh, like having to liquidate stuff. And that kind of suits me because I'm free to travel and, like, I just don't need that much stuff in my life. And live by the beach where you need, like, three pairs of built shorts, five t-shirts, and two oh, pairs of flip-flops. Yeah. yeah. And a hoodie in case it hits 65, you know? Yes. Yeah. And some yoga pants just because you like going out with the lemons. And... Yeah. <laughs> Typical thing. Yeah. And, um, and then I'm tapping in and I can't find what's missing in my life. So I've got a wonderful friend of mine called Dov Barron. And we met on Facebook six, seven years ago. Uh, he's over in uh, Vancouver, BC, and I was in New York City. And after three years, we got put in this group and find out we both went to the same school in Manchester. I thought he was a Canadian. He thought I was a New Yorker. 
and like we went to the same school in, in Manchester and like that. And we've become very, very good friends. And Dob, Dob is like a leading podcast guy, you know, speaker, does a lot of very, very, very cool stuff all over the planet. Very, like, very, um, I don't know the word, in, in, smart guy. Um, so I said, like, I just messaged Dob, I need to talk to you for 15 minutes, like, my, like, something's wrong in my head. And I've, I've coached this sort of stuff for years, and I can't figure out what I'm missing. And the comments were like, or get a dog. And I'm like, listen, I play with dogs all day long. They're not my dogs, that's why I like them. I can just give them back. Yeah. Or you need to get married. And I'm like, I don't need to get married. Okay? That's not it. That's not what the void is, okay? And I called Doc, and um, in like minutes he hits it straight away. And mindful that there's people watching this, so I, he said, yeah, 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 I know where you're at, exactly. You've hit the, what the F am I doing on this planet moment? And I went, yep, that's it. That's it. Nailed it. Like, what am I actually doing here? And um, and it's like self-actualization. He said most people will never get to that point in their life because they're so wrapped up in everything. And all of a sudden, you've got to that point where you've got more and more free thinking time, meditating time, whatever, and it just hit you. Um, very, very quickly. He said, run me for an exercise. The whole thing was 15 minutes. And he said, basically, find out what pisses you off the most. Somewhere opposite that is your purpose for being here. Oh, it's a good exercise. That was like, what? Yeah. And he said, I don't know what it is. And he said, but you're going to have a blast doing some research. And I'm kind of interested to find out, you know, where you're at. And I said, well, Dog, there's three things that really hit. And, and I know, because I do a lot of live videos on Facebook. And sometimes people will message me saying, you've got to stay away from that subject. It's just like bad energy for you. So one of them was homelessness. And I just flipped out a video in Spokane, Washington, like completely... Like, I'm making it on myself, I'm just like in the middle of the road, I'm screaming about this injustice. One of them is the, got to be careful here, uh, the way the food industry and the medical industry and the pharmaceutical industry are all kind of interlinked. Oh, for and sure. Mo and most of this stuff, you know, I maintain like, like the Greeks, you know, let like food be like medicine. Like reverse this stuff with food. You want to spend tens of billions curing something when it can be prevented by not putting the stuff in the food that's causing it in the first place. However, you know, I get it, it's life, it's life, it's business, no point me griping about it. The other one, which was, it was like indoctrination of kids, like bringing your kids up to things, you've got to go to school, you've got to do this, get good grades, you know, go to college, buy a white picket fence and like, you know, rainbow unicorns and, a, and an SUV <laughs> or something, whatever it is, I don't really subscribe to that. And um, he said, like, you know, you've got three, kind of find out where they align. And then, you know, I'm looking at it more and more, and living in San Diego, you see a lot of homeless veterans. And you obviously see a lot of them that's like PTSD or whatever you want to call it. Something, something's not white, right? And you go to other countries where you think there's more stress, Israel for one of them, and it's like literally unheard of. So I started delving into this thing about is PTSD reversible with food and what's the cause of it. And when I start talking to the vets, they've got all these vouchers in the vets magazines for fast food chains and sodas and like. If your brain is slightly askew with stress or whatever, the last thing you need is more sugar giving you spikes, crashes, spikes, and you just don't know where you're at. If you're homeless, you don't want to be waking up in the middle of the night with spikes and crashes. So I, I kind of went right. Someone's got to do something. And you look at the. You know, the low income communities uh, who just like that, you know, a lot of these, I use the term fast food, but just like anything, you can demographically ch target a low income community of any ethnicity if you want and send them who knows what pizza company's special deal with the free sodas. And you can see this involving. And I went, I'm looking at, we've got this great business going on, and everyone's doing really well. And I'm going, you know what? Someone has got to take this where no one else will go. And someone's got to roll the sleeves up and literally get in the trenches. And it's going to be dangerous. Because A, the food corporations don't want my voice going into their demographic, number one. Number two, if I've got to go downtown, wherever it may be, on the streets with a bunch of homeless vets, where the SEAL team guys and the Marines are based, I don't know what I'm walking into. And I don't know how unstable these things are. And I just said, screw it. If someone's going to do this, it's me. And I'm going, right. Great passion, great program. Love it. Where do I start? 
I'm not going to bankrupt myself personally on some mission. So I went, right, what's the quickest way to do this? And uh, chat away, I'm just going like, don't want to put much into it. So I created a t-shirt and it's F, the U, because this U with the flag, whatever it is, that is actually part of our company logo. This is not a company t-shirt, but it was F, U, K, Glucose. Oh yeah, I've seen those online. Well, those are mine. Yeah. Yeah. So I show up at a corporate event wearing that, and people are like, oh. I'm like, let me tell you the story behind this t shirt. And I actually got Dominic on a live stream, just completely blindsided, and Dom wanted to wear a t shirt. <laughs> and Dominic said, like, I think it's a wonderful course, Tony. And he goes on and talks about his exogenous ketones and everything. So that, I basically paid for a t shirt to be printed, bought a t shirt. I've got a great friend of mine that worked me on and off for years who understands like back office and technical stuff called Mike Melvin in Manchester. And it's like, Mike, put this together. And then this started, and like one or two people bought t shirts. And right, with that money, um, let's figure out how to do that. Let's build a website. And then I, keep, I just keep coming up with like these slightly not so t shirt ideas. Like, Mike, let's just build this. Let's find a way to do that. We're going to do this. And then don't the proceeds go to the proceeds the will be going. I want to be just make sure that I'm absolutely above board on this. So right now we're building it. So right now it's kind of recycling the, the money to build it so we've got money for legal fees and yeah, accounting and all the rest of it. And then but what I'm also doing is I'm connecting with different food companies that are aligned with ketogenics. Hey, I need a deal from you. Uh, give me an affiliate deal and just don't show me the cash but at some point I'm going to want it in terms of products so I can give it on the street to vets and things like that. So it's it's kind of evolving rapidly. Uh, so what I want to do, and I was in a, uh, someone's house last night, she cooked these um, chocolate cupcakes, there's no sugar in them. And I'm like, I could give out thousands of those on the street to vets, like taste of chocolate, no sugar, perfect. Fat coffees, which is another thing, same sort of thing. Like if I could show up every morning with a coffee truck and, and give vets like a fat coffee, which is like the, the butter and the uh, coconut oil, and that would fuel them for a day, but it also would stabilize that they're like glucose spikes and crashes. So it's kind of an easing way into it. What's the name? Are you able to say the name of the organization you're Yeah, that? well, it's, okay. if you go to disruptproject.com, there's a, the world's crappiest website. Oh, gosh, nice. But it sells really, <laughs> but it sells really, really cool T-shirts, and that is providing. So yeah, we'll we'll do all that. But I'm not, you know, I'm not spending like x amount of thousands of dollars out of my own pocket to do it. And I'm like, let's just do this, figure it out as like we go. Like groceries, that's kind of the best way to start. To yeah. <laughs> so you know, I'm putting more time into it than I'm putting money. By the way, buy some T-shirts. Disruptproject.com. Buy some T-shirts. I have to buy my own T-shirts that I design off myself at full price, so you can buy some. I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, know, it's such a good cause. I mean, I think that the PTSD stuff, I mean, especially living in San Diego and with The homeless vet stuff. Yeah. And actually, I want to give a plug out here. My, my buddy Brian, who we started with, is also, you know, it's like pay it forward. He's got a business called Tax 6 so T-A-C-T-6. And with them, what you do is you buy like this, um, what's it called, like a... Um, a hammock, it's a weatherproof hammock, you buy one, but they said like buy two and give one to a homeless vet. Oh nice! So it's an online course, so we find all these causes that everyone, you know, a lot of people I work with are doing very well in this, in this, you know, project, but I also, a lot of people I work with are going like, hey, there's more, but we can't be in a line on a lot of stuff here, oh, so that's all, all really cool, buy oh, t-shirts, <laughs> buy t-shirts. So let's, let's go into some of the questions, we'll do like a rapid fire on the remaining questions, because I'm sure people want to learn more. Yeah about just stuff you do for self-care. What yep. do you do? In terms of self-care, yes. um, you, sure, yeah. you name it, I've done it. Starting back yoga, I've got chronic uh, myofascia scarring, which means like some days I can't walk 100 meters. I did like a couple of ultras, things like that, train through injuries, because I'm a stubborn New Yorker, I could do it. Yeah. And now, like, the I, ultras, I, did you do a 50 or 100 or what? Uh, I did like two, one of them was about 47, and the other one, they were just like anything over 26 to is technically not. So one was 47, one was 42. I did them both in the same week, one on a treadmill and with no nutrition at all. Okay, so smart move because someone yeah. told me that's nuts and no one would do that. Oh, really? Let me. Prove so the yoga, how many days a week do you do yoga? I'm starting tomorrow again. I've not done it for a few years. I've been injured for like three, four years. Okay. Um, and I'll do things gently, and then if I, now it's like really listening to the body. So I'm starting tomorrow. 
Uh, I'm going to start with like three days a week on the slow, nice and easy. I brought my back seven years ago as well, so that's kind of a little thing. And I'm always like breaking stuff. Oh, no. yeah, like, uh oh. So hey, self care is important for you. Yeah. So, what about your favorite book? All time favorite book. Could be anything. Um, oh, by the way, just quick one on self care food. Just food. Yeah. Food. I go right. The right foods. The, the right, right foods. foods, yeah. <laughs> Fix it all with food. I don't. I know where every gym is in San Diego because I walk past every front door. Not in any of them. Just walk past. I go for a walk. So if you're not feeling great, you're feeling depressed, just go for a walk. Go for a walk, get yeah. some fresh air, get some. Yeah, yeah, but the food, the right food. The right food, yeah. yeah. Low carb, high fat. Sounds nuts. Okay. Uh, favorite book? I had a few. Uh, I mean, I could talk about cycle seven. I had eight to match well mulch. Oh, which that's is a very, great one. Very linked <laughs> into a lot of what we do here. Tony Robbins stuff I read. I mean, that, this was before you know self development books, and now just so many of these things. But I'll tell you, like Sid Arthur was one of the best books I ever read, and I'm just about to reread it again. Herman Hess. Uh, over the last few years, best one that I've given out most as gifts: Born to Run. Born to Run. Who wrote that again? Uh, Christopher McDougall. Okay. And it's about the Tower of America Indians and shoe design and eating. And he wrote another one that's even better called Natural Born Heroes which I thought was about kidnapping a German general, and it turns out it talks about kinesiology, flow, self-defense, Bruce Lee, how to eat once a day, climb up mountains. Well, this is really weird. This is not, this is all, this is rope for me. I Same love there. it. I Christopher love it. McDougall. And then back to the Smith eating real quick, your one big meal a day mm -hmm. is what time of day? Is it at dinner? Uh, it's in the evening usually. It's in yeah. the evening. Yeah. Okay, and how, much, how many hours of sleep do you get? Three. Or me? Three. You only need three? Usually, yeah. Okay. It's a, you know, it's, and if you know anything about circadian rhythms, as long as it's in 90 minute cycles, so anyone that tells you, take eight hours sleep, here's what you do. You take your pillow and you smash it over the head. Oh, no. I said pillow, not that. I know, I know. 90 minute cycles, whether it's three hours, four and a half hours, six hours, seven and a half, whatever works for you, but the challenge of waking up on eight is you wake up at the wrong time of your sleep cycle. So if you had eight hours sleep and wake up tired, you could have 15. Because no, you didn't have a full REM cycle. Yeah, okay. you got it. So three hours works for me. Some days will be four and a half. And I, I don't use an alarm or anything. Like I just I wake up to, I live by the ocean. I'll just wake up. And I'll, if I go to bed at 11 at night, at two in the morning, you'll, you'll be one person that goes, it's usually been about two weeks of being on my Facebook. Do you ever actually sleep? Because you post like at all different times. Yeah, and it's just like, yeah, three hours. Like, what's wrong with you? Well, no, I do. Yeah, I can't operate on that. You can. I can. I, I need to study Self, how to do that. Self-talk. You <laughs> you're right. You're right. Okay. okay. Um, so I don't, um, what's another question would be, um, oh, what's your number one, so for our audience, something they could implement immediately, what is your number one health hack? Number one health hack immediately? Find a guy that's got ketones and, and just try them. Just try them. That's not me promoting a product. That's just, that's the reality. That's the one that's the one thing is I try to drink that open this whole rabbit. I wouldn't be here right now had I not tried that drink. No. We have a thing, Low Carb USA. It's an event. The first one was San Diego. That whole event with the leading light, you know, it's not a business thing. It's like the leading minds on earth descend on San Diego to talk about this kind of stuff. And reach out to me. But if you know someone that has got this stuff, the ketone operating system, just try it. No, I'm absolute get By the way, I brought some for you. you oh, have, nice. It's, it's mandatory, you have no choice. Okay, no. Okay. I knew you were talking about it earlier. Like, do you want to do waterboarding? Because I'm going to make sure she drinks it. <laughs> I will, no, I will. I will. Yeah, I'd say that. So right. then that's a good lead into how people can get in touch with you. What's the number one best way to get in touch with you? <clears throat> number one best way to get in touch with me without giving my phone number out on here. If you go uh, Living Bulletproof, spelled the normal way, livingbulletproof.com is my business. Or if you go to Facebook, because we live in Facebook land, uh, the real R E A M Tony T O N Y C O H E N. I mean, if you can tap Tony Cohen on, on Facebook, I'm usually always on top anyway. But the easiest way to absolutely know it's me, and it will have some stupid job dog job title that is completely <laughs> completely non related to anything I'm doing here. It's just like Facebook, so you might as well have fun on it. Yeah, you might as well have fun. But the real Tony Cohen on Facebook. Or, um, yeah, uh, outside of giving out emails. No, that's perfect. Um, to death. No, you don't. But yeah, li livingbulletproof.com if you want to know more about ketones. Nice. It's all on there, and I think my phone is probably on there. 
Sweet. There we go. Well, well thank, thank you. you so much. Hopefully, you, again, this was our first ever two-part interview. So with Tony, and it was a lot of fun. We um, definitely subscribe if you haven't yet to the channel or the, our iTunes podcast. And you can leave comments. You can let me know what future topics you want to talk about, us to talk about, what experts you want me to have on um, in the health, happiness realm, fitness, nutrition. I'm not an expert. Like, just so no, you're yes. just so clear. I'm not an expert. Again, we'll put the disclosure. We'll put the yes. disclosure. I'm, um, I'm going to buy it. I'm not, not an expert. I actually have a not a guru t-shirt on the this. Oh, yeah, you're right, you're right. Yeah. No, and that's what's funny. And again, I own a wellness spa, but by any means, I'm not a wellness expert. That's why I'm just lucky enough to surround myself with a bunch of experts and people that know their stuff, and that's always fun because I love to learn. Um, so yeah, there you have it. So thanks so much for uh, uh, tuning in today. Am I allowed back? Uh, yes, we will have you back eventually. <laughs> there you go. Waiting. Okay, bye guys. Bye.